Okay. Hi, um, this is EIM 5052 Project Optimization. So this is then the first introduction course. Uh, my name is Zulfan Adiputra and um, my office here in UTP is uh, five, building 5, level 3, room number 8. And these are my, uh, this is my phone number and my email address. And you can always see me in uh, Friday afternoon. Um, so process optimization. So um, um, uh, before moving forward, I think I would like you to pause this video and uh, write down what your expectations are from this course and then why are you taking this uh, MSc process integration. The objective of the course is to, um, uh, to apply the uh, optimization method and then to, um, to solve various different of problems using the techniques that we are going to explore uh, throughout the course. The learning outcomes is then to, uh, that students should be able to formulate the different types of optimization problem and then the applying the optimization technique to solve them. Uh, these are then some transferable skills that we would like you to have at the end of the course. Um, I divide the course into two big parts. So we will start with the objective and uh, constraint formulation. I think I'll yeah, objective and constraint formulations, and then um, from the constraints, we would then have like um, unconstrained optimization part, and then the constraint optimization part. So in each of them, uh, we will have like one variable uh, with different methods to solve them, and then and more than one variables or multi variables with different methods to solve them. And then for the constraint optimizations, we will have uh, we learn about Lagrange and gauss kanta algorithm linear programming, non-linear, uh, and then integer programming by uh, branch and bound. So this unconstrained optimization normally form the first part of the course. Well, we will have our mid-test one, and then the, the constant optimization will form the second part of the course, which will then become our mid-test two. Um, so the... Um, Assessments of the course, we have 10% of quizzes and assignments and then 30% uh, of the tests and then 60% of the final exam. These are then the, the, the scale uh, for the grade. Uh, this is the book, old book of our main references, Optimization of Chemical Processes, and you could also read uh, um, Engineering Optimization and Method Applications for your optional reference. And you could also surf in the web, in Google or YouTube, uh, for, um, just Google things like um, uh, optimization in chemical engineering, or optimization in general, you could also do that. So, um, just to give you a glimpse of optimization, uh, take for example, we have... Um, a pipe. So um, this is then, for example, the size. Uh, we have y-axis as the cost of the pipe, and then the 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 uh, x-axis is then the pipe diameter. So if we, we can we can imagine that the higher the pipe diameter, and then that means the the more materials that we were going to have, and then the fixed cost based on that capital investment will be then uh, higher and higher. Uh, if we have a larger pipe diameter, we will have uh, less friction, which means that we will have less pumping power, which means then the uh, the cost of the pumping power is then going to be reduced uh, from the smaller diameter to the higher diameter. So if we sum these two curves, the investment cost and then the operating cost will have like a total cost. And then in this total cost, you will see that there is a curve and then there is a minimum point somewhere which um, signals the optimum uh, pipe diameter. So this is a very exam uh, simple example on um, uh, how to find um, optimum pipe diameter. And then the, another example is that um, if we have a, a feed and then a reactor with a certain convention, and then we have a separation unit uh, downstream of the reactor, and then in the separation unit we then recycle the un unreacted uh, feed, and uh, we have our product. Uh, for low conversion, which means that we have um, higher unreacted feed, which we will then have to separate them in the recycling part, so it will then increase the separation cost because we have a lot of uh, 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 unreacted feed in that 
sense. This is valid if we, we if we if we think of uh, the unreacted feed as a uh, like a lighter, for example, a lighter component, uh, and this separation unit, for example, is then the distillation column. So if we have um, if we have uh, more uh, unreacted feed and then we have to boil them up as the top distillate that means we will need much more energy to to boil them and also a much bigger column so in that sense we will then increase the separation cost um, if we have like a higher recycle uh, sorry higher um, uh, conversion in on, on the other hand that means we will have uh, much less unreacted fit to be recycled that means we will have like a cheaper sep cost of the separation unit but we will have a larger or longer reactor to achieve such a high conversion. So if we then plot them in the next in this figure, cost on the y-axis and then x uh, axis is then the conversion. Uh, the higher the conversions, we will have um, longer and bigger reactor to facilitate that high conversion. But we will have like a lower or cheaper separation cost. So we will have, if we sum these two curves together, we'll have a total cost where we will find an optimum uh, or minimum total cost. Another example is then the, um, the a boiler stack. So we have uh, here on the left y-axis is then thermal efficiency. On the right axis, right y axis is the emission, and then in the x axis is then the air to fuel ratio. So if we have um, so one means uh, we have a one to one air to fuel ratio. So if we increase the air to fuel ratio, meaning from moving the x axis from the left to the right, we will then increase the thermal efficiency as we see in this solid line. Uh, and then uh, we will then also having uh, uh, like um, lower emissions of hydrocarbons because more the more air that we put into the uh, into the boiler means we will then burn more uh, more and more hydrocarbons. Hence, the emissions of hydrocarbons will also be then going down and down until a certain point that all of the hydrocarbons are burned. Uh, but then uh, the more nitrogen the more air that we put in means we put also more nitrogen hence we will have like nitrogen oxides emissions starting from one so it will then be increasing higher and higher and uh, this also shows that our thermal efficiency after a certain point after a certain air to fuel ratio it will drop because the more air that we put in the more energy is then going to be used to burn that uh, to increase the temperature of the air which is then going to reduce the thermal efficiency. So um, we see that there is a, a, a maximum thermal efficiency that we can attain um, uh, at, a certain, at a certain fuel air to fuel ratio. Um, another case is then the, if we have like a distillation column, for example, so we have a feed enter and distillation column, and this consists of uh, several number of trays and um, the heavy part will go to the reboiler and it will then be evaporated goes back to the column while the top product of the column will then be condensed uh, and then the, um, the distillate will then be sent to the downstream equipment and we have some reflux so as we can see here it is also like a like a trade-off between the size of the column and then the size of the reboiler for example to get the certain purity um, of of uh, of product of this distillate product means if we want to have a higher purity which means we have to then reflux more if we reflux more that means we will have a high load of, of liquid um, flowing down the, the column and it will then end up in the reboiler which we will have to which we will have to reboil them and then it will then also increase the vapor load throughout the column so you can see having a higher purity uh, we can uh, have uh, we might need to have like a higher reboiler or uh, a bigger column but it will also mean that if we uh, have uh, instead of having a re uh, bigger reboiler we could also have like a more stages like if we wash like our clothes if it's not clean enough we will have to wash it again and again so that is then the same um, practical example as in this tray so if we have to have if we want to have like a higher purity of this delay, that means we have to have more trays and in that sense we will have um, uh, we will then reduce the duty of the reboiler 
So we'll have a trade-off between the bigger dairy boiler or the, the higher the tray. So the capital cost for the tray or the capital cost and also the operating cost for the reboiler to get uh, the same uh, distillate purity. So basically, to sum up, if we have like a, a chemical plant or plant or industrial plant or whatever plant, we have a raw materials coming in and then we have a, a product coming out and then we to get this product from the from the from the raw material we will have to use other resources like for example fuel for the energy water for washing on other solvents or other uh, um, uh, raw materials and uh, we know that the plant is not like we're not going to have like 100 percent uh, yield of the product from the raw materials we'll end up having like um, certain amount of byproducts some waste for example and also some wastewater so uh, the only thing from this from this plant from this um, uh, diagram that makes money is then the product. So if we uh, would like to, um, uh, uh, in this case, to make the maximum profit, that means we will have to make the highest amount of product as possible, and at the same time we will then minimize the the, the raw materials and also minimize the other resources as well as minimize the amount of, of byproducts and waste because this will also cost money to treat them. Um, this is what I've just said. So we will also have to minimize, uh, for example, or uh, simplify the equipment, which means we could also uh, we should also minimize the capex or investment. So process optimization, to sum this all up, for this introduction case, process optimization is all about mass and energy balance. So if we see here, so I think um, I need you to, to, to try to solve this on your own. So we have uh, ethyl benzene production in its simplest form. So we have ethylene, we have benzene coming in 9 ton per hour, we have toluene 1 ton per hour, we have a uh, fixed battery reactor. And then we, in this reactor, we have three reactions occur. Uh, benzene plus ethylene making ethyl benzene, toluene plus two ethylene making ethyl benzene and three propane, and ethyl benzene plus ethylene we have diethyl benzene, and um, downstream of the reactor we have a flash where we flash out the ethylene, the light gases, the ethylene and propane in this case, and then the heavy parts goes to the first distillate column where we um, uh, separate benzene from the heavier one like ethyl benzene and uh, diethyl benzene and then in the second column we separate ethyl benzene as our uh, main product and then diethyl benzene uh, as the heavy product so um, in this reactor we have a conversion of benzene of 90 percent toluene of 100 uh, percent so the question is then if the ethylene excess is zero see this is then the, going to be zero and the ethylene selectivity to diethyl benzene is then 1%. And then how much is then the ethyl benzene produced? That's the main question. And then the di if, second question is then if the diethyl benzene is going to be converted, can be converted, uh, if we react them with the benzene, benzene over here, to make two, di two ethyl benzene, calculate how much is then the new ethyl benzene is produced. And then you have to then, in question number three, adjust the block this, this block diagram to include the answer in point two. And then the last question is that more like an open question. So what do we have to do to maximize the profit in this case? Um, so please do it on your own and then, um, and, well, then submit to me the, uh, the answer. Um, this is the end of the first session.